What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new, the all new 2025 Mazda CX-70, courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Mazda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So again, like I said, this is all new for 2025, so you gotta love that. Essentially though, it's the same thing as the CX-90, but with two major differences. So ultimately in this video, I'm gonna be going over those differences along with everything else about this one, including acceleration, braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2025 CX-70. First one being the preferred, starting at $40,445. Then you have the premium for 45,900, premium plus for 48,900, S premium for 52,450. And lastly, the one we are in today being the S premium plus for $55,950. But as you can imagine with all of these trim levels, there are a couple different power plant configurations for the CX-70. First one belonging to all of those non-S trim levels. That one is powered by a 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six cylinder with a mild hybrid system, putting out 280 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 332 pound-feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM, that power being sent to all four wheels through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys, of course, know we will be testing out here in a little bit. As far as MPGs go, that comes in at 24 in the city, 28 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is that other engine configuration belonging to the S trim levels and the power plant that we have today, essentially being powered by the same engine, just tuned a little bit differently to put out 300 40 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 369 pound-feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM. NPG numbers for that one, 23, the city 28 on the highway, but with this particular engine configuration, this one takes premium unleaded fuel. So that's really one of the big differences between the two besides the power, of course. But so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the CX-70, I do want to mention to you guys the drive modes. Let me actually turn down the air a little bit. Drive modes is going to be a toggle switch located just in front of the shifter. It's called Mi Drive or MI Drive, whatever you want to call it. Drive modes will include sport, off-road, towing, and normal, adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response. So now that I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quick they are going to react for us here. Paddle shifter test here. Don't shift for me, please. All right, it did shift for me, but kind of. It, I mean, it shifted into second automatically, but it didn't actually hold any gears, unfortunately. So that's kind of a bummer. I would have liked to have had the paddle shifters for that, but now that we're in, nope, it just went back to drive automatically there. So anyhow, so full manual shift mode would be nice, Mazda, if you wanted to do that, because the cool thing about paddle shifters, especially in an SUV, is if it's snowing out rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road going down a hill, you can actually do a little bit of downshifting so you're less likely to actually slide off the road because you're using engine braking rather than actually hitting the brakes. So they're good for that reason, but having said that, paddle shifters are somewhat of a gimmick here in the CX-70, unfortunately, because it's not a full manual mode. But anyhow, since we are already back in drive, obviously, the car put us there. Let's go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly the CX-70 can get us here up to speed. All right, here is our straightaway in three, two, one, go. We're going up a hill. Dang, this thing is noisy. <laughs> All right, plenty of power for merging onto the highway, that's for sure, but why was that so noisy? Good grief. That's one of the noisiest accelerations that I've heard in quite a while for it not being like a performance car like the M4 I just drove. That surprised me. So yeah, plenty of an acceleration. You're not gonna have any issues there, but kind of noisy. I'm just saying, but to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.7 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that braking feel goes, uh, brilliant. Brilliant, Mazda crushed the braking feel, that is for sure. So definitely on the firmer side of things, very firm braking feel instantly brings you to a stop. Those are the kind of braking feels that I personally prefer. Having said that, most SUVs give you soft braking feels, but having said that, 
It's not my style. I like the firm braking feels exactly like this one. So well done Mazda for that. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, that's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So I don't have any issues there, but the best part about Mazda in general, including the CX-70 of course, is the steering feel. It's weighted so much on the heavier side of things, instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go. And when I say that, I, I don't mean it's like a really heavy steering feel. I'm meaning just, it's like a sports car-like steering feel. Like they took the Mazda Miata steering feel and they put it in the CX-70. And that's a brilliant thing because this is more of a driver's SUV because of that. So I absolutely love the steering feel. And this is something that Mazda always does in all of their vehicles. So yet again, well done Mazda there. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 46 miles per hour right now. I will say besides that acceleration, it's been a pretty serene cabin. Um, I'm actually getting a little bit of wind noise coming from the moonroof, the panoramic moonroof here. But other than that, it's nothing that would bother me, but yeah, usually you don't get that much noise from the moonroof either. Like it's not loud, I'm just saying, but I'm just not used to it, that's all. Anywho, the touching of your visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Now, I will say there is some blind zones at the very back corners, probably due to the design of this thing, but the design looks dang good. We'll get to that in a second, but other otherwise, it's it's pretty darn good. I don't have any issues there. Rain sensing windshield wipers, they do come standard on the CX-70, so whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers, so it's kind of like automatic headlights, just one less thing you gotta worry about there. But also with forward visibility, I am actually looking at a head-up display right now. It's hard to see through sunglasses, but if I put my sunglasses up, that's a super bright head-up display. It's giving me my speed limit to the right, also my speed on the left there. That's brilliant. That is an excellent head-up display right there. So that's definitely gonna assist with forward visibility. And by the way, that comes for all trim levels, but the preferred. So just the bottom trim level is not gonna get it, but all the other trim levels will. So gotta love that. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Mazda CX-70. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Mazda CX-70 finished in rhodium white premium. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today, I think it's like a pearl white. It looks dang good on the CX-70, but as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter J, indicating that the new CX-70 is built and assembled in Japan, as it should be. I gotta love it, but starting up front, gloss black mesh front grille does come standard. You got front air curtains to the bottom corners there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics, if I could talk today. LED headlights to the sides with LED daytime running lights. You get the automatic feature with that. Also automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. But also, with the S trim levels only, I'm gonna get up a little closer, but you will get an adaptive front lighting system. That is so dang cool. So essentially what that means is when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or Sasquatch or an alien or gnomes or whatever the case. So that is pretty stinking cool. It's a safety feature in itself. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the CX-70. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, and so but now since we are around to the side of the CX-70, black aluminum roof rails do come standard across the board. Rear privacy glass also coming standard. On those front fenders there, you're gonna find some inline six cylinder or inline six badging. So that's because of the engine, of course. Inline six cylinder engine is pretty rare actually. So usually see them on like BMWs, but it is a rare thing. So pretty Pretty cool seeing that. Gloss black power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals and they will actually be power folding if you were to go with the premium plus trim level end up. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. They're gonna differ slightly depending upon the trim. 19 by 8.5 inch aluminum alloys for the preferred, but then the premium trim level and up is gonna give you 21 by 9.5 inch aluminum alloys. So a little bit wider of a tire, but also larger of a tire as well. But overall, very good looking side profile. Well, let's not go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the CX-70, all the way to the top, you're gonna find a very tiny shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper. 
LED taillights, of course, do come standard across the board. And then just below it all, you will actually find dual exhaust outlets. I would have loved to have seen them work them into the rear bumper somehow rather than just tucking them away, but it doesn't look bad. It's just, I don't know. I think it looks cool with the exposed exhaust, but that's just me. But anyways, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, zooming out since we are around to the back of the CX-70, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, a power tailgate does come standard on this thing, so you gotta love that, but then the premium trim level and up is gonna give you a hands-free power tailgate. So that's one option, there is a button on the key fob, and there's a rubberized button, of course, on the tailgate itself as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 39.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 75.3 cubic feet. And that's the first big difference between the CX-70 and the CX-90 is the fact that the CX-90 gives you a third row. The CX-70 does not give you that third row. So Anyways, a lot going on in that cargo area. There's grocery bag hooks, there's LED cargo lighting, there's a 120 volt power outlet back there. There's a 12 volt power outlet back there as well then. Tons of added cargo space. Uh, we actually had an added accessory, which is kind of like a, a cargo box almost to kind of hold everything together. But then if you were to lift that up in the cargo floor, you're actually gonna find in-floor storage with even more cargo boxes, which is the second big difference between the CX-90 and the CX-70 is the fact that you get in-floor storage with a bunch of added cargo kind of dividers within that in-floor storage, which is kind of convenient. But that leads the question to me, if they make two vehicles exactly the same size with those being the only real two big differences, I'm wondering if Mazda is planning on making the CX-90 something bigger in the future, kind of like Hyundai just recently did with their Palisade. So I'm wondering if the CX-90 is going to then compete with the uh, Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander, and uh, Palisade, for example, uh, things like that. So I don't know. I'm just guessing on that. There's no rumors or anything. I'm just guessing. So anyways, then make your way up to that second row legroom that comes in at 39.4 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation, of course, does come standard. You got a rear center armrest with cup holders as well. If you wanted heated second row seats, that comes with the premium plus trim level and up. And believe it or not, I've never seen this before. All trim levels, even the bottom trim, gets rear window sunshades or side window sunshades. That's typically an option even on like Mercedes Benz for like upper trims. But the fact that every single trim level gets that, that's pretty cool. I've never seen that. I love it. But then make your way up to the front seats. Power adjustable front seats do come standard for all trims. Leather seating, all trims are going to get that. Heated front seats, all trim levels are going to get that. Ventilated front seats, though, are going to come with the premium plus trim level and up. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, that's been absolutely perfectly fine. So I love these seats. It's a combination of leather kind of and this suede or Alcantara insert in the middle. And that's continued on throughout the vehicle. We'll get more into the interior quality in a little bit, but it is phenomenal, let me tell you guys. But seats are plenty comfortable, definitely no issues there. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel because I love this two-toned look. It reminds me of Volvo, definitely a nice look to it, but it is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable in our case, leather wrapped for all trim levels, and it will be heated on the premium plus trim level and up. So wouldn't have minded a little thicker 10 and two grips, but other than that, the steering wheel is perfectly fine. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got a Mazda logo on the one side. All of your buttons, however, are located on the side of the key. So you got lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear tailgate there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauges there. And so once started up, seven inch digital screen is gonna come with that preferred trim. However, all other trim levels being the premium and up is gonna get what you are looking at, which is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which by the way, changes the entire look depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. So normal has your traditional look with, you know, speedometer, tachometer, all that stuff. And actually all of the trims have that, but it's more of a black and white theme. If you were to put it in sport driving mode, it's gonna give you a bunch of different red hues, which looks stinking cool. And let me actually switch it up to off-road. And it kind of gives you an off-road look, more of a rugged truck kind of gauge cluster look. So that's kind of cool too. I think that looks pretty darn good, but 
Overall, uh, digital speedometer as well. How many miles you have left until you hit empty? There's outside temperature, which says it's upper 90s today, which is absolutely insane. So that's why I got the air cranked. But yeah, gauges look absolutely no issues there. They look phenomenal. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof does come standard on all trim levels, but the premium plus trim level and up is going to give you a panoramic moonroof. So you got to love that with the exception of a little bit of wind noise coming into the cabin because of it. Overhead sunglass holder does come standard i like that as well led interior lighting actually does come standard for all trim levels across the board that's pretty cool tri-zone climate control also standard so both driver and passenger and the rear passengers can all set their individual temperatures there wireless phone charger comes standard for all trim levels across the board that's located just in front of the shifter there just beside that wireless phone charger you have a 12 volt power outlet beside the shifter is a couple cup holders however i do wish they finished the trim surrounding the shifter uh, anything other than just a matte black they could have kept this kind of design located around everything else they could have put that there they could have put a gloss black finish they could have put anything but that matte black finish i i hate that it's so cheap looking but anyways just behind all of that within the center armrest not a ton of space if i'm being honest but um it should get the job done i guess and uh you got a couple charging ports in there as well so that's pretty cool i like the silver handle on the passenger side glove box that's a nice added touch but my favorite part about the interior quality has got to be this suede finish found just above the climate control settings, found just above the passenger side glove box, and that is carried on to the doors as well. So that's why I'm saying this is a very luxury like cabin. Like I've been in BMWs that don't have this kind of interior quality minus surrounding the shifter. That's my one gripe. But other than that, this is pretty darn nice. The, the suede really does it for me. I think that looks amazing, but Anywho, let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. Now, this is not a touch screen in typical Mazda fashion, I guess you could say. It is a 12.3 inch infotainment screen, which is controlled by the circular dial and buttons located just behind the shifter. So with that, you have Bluetooth and audio streaming. You have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which by the way is wireless. So that's pretty darn cool. Uh, factory navigation system comes on the premium trim level and up if you wanted that. You have uh, some driving statistics up there if you wanted to check that out, like vehicle status and fuel efficiency, things like that. Along, of course, with your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're gonna find eight speakers for the preferred trim, and then a 12 speaker Bose sound system for the premium trim level and up. So therefore, we do have that Bose sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, a ton of bass there, plenty of clarity. Now, that was FM radio. Unfortunately, the Sirius XM wasn't hooked up quite yet for the uh, CX-70 that we're in, but I would imagine it would be a heck of a lot more clear if we have that Sirius XM, but there was actually a really good sound system. I could tell even with the FM radio, plenty of bass there. I actually had a Bose sound system in my G35 coupe back in the day. It never failed me or broke or anything like that. So very reputable company as well. So I don't have any issues there. So last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen though, is when you do put the CX-70 in reverse, you will find a very high definition rear view camera. Well done, Monster, for that. But you also get the 360 degree monitor there to the right if you go with the premium plus trim level and up which is always is going to lead us in the safety and so to start the cx70 is an iihs top safety pick so that's a wonderful start right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert lane keep assist lane departure warning adaptive cruise control with stopping go driver attention alert and front and rear parking sensors that last one typically doesn't come standard either that's pretty cool then the premium trim level and up is going to add to that blind spot assist road keep assist hands-on traffic avoidance assist and cruising and traffic support then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts of the cx70 brilliant styling so the exterior looks absolutely amazing definitely was a big fan of that great steering feel as well in typical mazda fashion wonderful interior quality that's really where this one shines in my personal opinion this suede finish and the fact that it's a tan suede finish uh it's absolutely amazing i love it and that continues on to the doors and the seats as well so big fan of that uh as far as the room for improvement goes i'll give you two things uh, I personally question the reliability of this just because I don't see it being as uh, reliable as a naturally aspirated engine or even a naturally aspirated hybrid configuration. This is a 
turbocharged inline six cylinder with a mild hybrid system. So it just seems like there's more to go wrong there. I could be dead wrong and I hope I am because this car is freaking phenomenal otherwise. Uh, but the other thing is, like I mentioned earlier, why would you make two cars so incredibly similar, the CX-70 and the CX-90, unless you were going to make the CX-90 bigger? and make that a bigger three row kind of SUV because the third row is basically useless in the CX-90 right now because it's not the largest SUV. It's not even as close to as big as a Honda Pilot or a Toyota Highlander. So I think this SUV is perfect. I think it's right but I do think the CX-90 should be a little bit bigger. So I don't know, that's just my take. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.